Hey everybody and welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. In this video, I'm going to very quickly talk about the principles of fault finding and go through a couple of very basic methods that you can utilize in your RemPy code. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting that notification icon. That really helps me out. And of course, an even bigger thank you to all of my patrons and members. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. So fault finding is something that every programmer is going to have to do at some point or other. And the main reason for that is human error. Either your code syntax is incorrect or you've made a typo or you're just trying to do things which just really aren't possible. Personally, I have a rule of thumb. If I encounter an issue with my code and the solution to that issue doesn't become immediately apparent within 20 or 30 seconds of looking at the code, that's when I start employing other fault finding techniques. It's really up to you where your limits are, but the amount of time that you can waste staring at lines and lines of code rather than jumping straight into fault finding techniques that we can utilize which may yield faster results the amount of time that you can waste doing that can quite quickly ramp up and you can find that you're wasting hours and hours of time that you could be using to create game assets or add new code so the first very simple technique is to add some debug code into your game loop and what I mean by that is adding code into your game loop, which prints out the values of the variables that you're trying to look for. So, for example, you've got an event system in your game which sets off certain events at certain times, but they aren't triggering. You can simply put those into your game loop by just putting speech marks like so and then just typing in the value that you want inside square brackets. So let's say, for example, I wanted to know what click type every time the game loop came through, put in that there. And this is great for certain types of errors. But to be honest, the most common way that you're going to find your errors is by running your game and then pressing shift O, which takes you into your console and you're going to have to become very familiar with this console because you're going to spend an awful lot of time in it regardless of your level of coding ability because you're going to want to test your games to make sure that certain events occur at the right time for example this happiness gauge changes color dependent on the value within it and as you can see i've been tweaking this to see to test that assuming that i haven't made an error you can see that as you change the value the color of the bar changes and you're going to use this technique to find defects as well as to test your programming out i'd strongly advise you when you're coding your games to get into the console as quickly as possible and just start testing everything with different values to make sure that it's going to happen likewise when you're testing your event system you can simply use the print statement to print the value that you're looking for like so, making sure that you're using the correct keywords. Uh, you can, you're going to want to test all of these values out. So if you're expecting a value, uh, an event to trigger, then you can simply print out the criteria variables that you've got and just test to find out if the values are correct or not. And that's going to help you isolate very quickly why your code isn't operating as intended. Now, it's very difficult to demonstrate this without actually writing buggy code, but you get the principles of it. The point of this video is to say that you need to get yourselves familiar with the console and play around with it as much as you possibly can. Inject different types of values in, get different types of values out. I know that a lot of people tend to panic as soon as they get an error and go straight to, well, sometimes they come to my channel, which obviously I don't mind. But the worst thing you can do is print your code out onto a forum such as the Lemosoft forums. Not only are you showing off your entire game code, which is technically your copyrighted material, just doesn't make you look very professional. This is something that you're just going to get better at the more you play with RedPy and the more you try and work with different techniques that we've covered throughout the videos in this channel. Thanks very much for watching that guys. I hope you found that useful. Smash like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye.